my thoughts on musical practice during the social media era. So this is kind of a big topic because there's been a lot of information thrown at us over the past few years, especially now during the COVID year. It becomes so overwhelming that we have no idea what to do with our time and our energy, and really we become unfocused in our goals. So here are three questions I want to pose to you. Number one, is what you're practicing useful? Number two, are you overwhelmed with all there is to practice? And number three, how do I measure my success and my progress? Let me answer those questions from a personal perspective. Is what I'm practicing useful? The short answer is always. I'm always practicing something that is going to be useful. That being said, there might be some things that I'm actually wanting to get better at that might not actually translate so much into practical things. As a drummer, we have been inundated with patterns. We have been inundated with ways of thinking about time and there's a lot of complex things being thrown at us at all times. You go on Instagram and there's about 10,000 people showing you what to practice. You go on YouTube, like you are right now hopefully, listening to some talking head, talking about what you should be practicing. This video included is just adding to the overwhelm that you feel with all this information. And without proper guidance, most musicians are going to be lost in a sea of information. I find myself in this place where I feel pressure that I'm putting on myself to play a certain way or to understand different ways of drumming and different concepts, more advanced things, things that I didn't even work on in college. I'm feeling that pressure because I see all of these musicians out there doing incredible things. And it makes me want to do those incredible things too. Am I overwhelmed with what to practice? Yes and no. So I know what I did to get to where I'm at today. I know all the steps that I took in order to get to understanding music in the way that I understand it. And I certainly think it worked, but when I was growing up, we didn't have this kind of access. And I'm not saying that this access is bad because it's not. I definitely feel more enriched by all that I know and that I see and by all these experiences I'm having watching people do some amazing things. But that being said, with all of that information, my brain is having a really hard time figuring out what it is I want to work on specifically. Now, if I had this figured out and I was working on stuff, then the question is, how do I measure my progress that is actually the easiest part, yet the most difficult part. Of course I can see and feel if I'm getting better at something. It's like, yesterday I was able to lift 25 pounds and next week I'll be able to lift 30 pounds. Well, that's concrete progress. And in music, you can see that basically in the confidence you feel with doing something that is new and challenging. On the flip side, it can be challenging for me to measure my progress because I'm constantly questioning whether or not the things that I want to be good at are going to be usable in a real life application. One criteria, and this will be tip number one, that I find is helpful to understand is that everything that I'm practicing should build confidence. So what I mean by building confidence is that when I'm practicing something difficult, while I may not use that application in a song that I'm playing for a show, that's okay. If I'm building my confidence, that means that when I go out into the world and play a show, I'm also going to play confidently. And that is the one thing that I'm constantly trying to evaluate and work on because those are things that I do think that could be better. I always think to myself, am I ready to sit in a room with my heroes? And if the answer is no, which it usually is, then what can I do to build my confidence so that I am ready to be in a room with those people. This one's pretty obvious, but it's really hard to accomplish. Setting goals and having a plan. As I said before, when you go online and you see all these videos showing you how to do these really complicated sticking patterns or these really complicated grooves, and you see all these musicians who are really killing it in the game, it becomes so overwhelming that you're like, I can't handle this, I'm never gonna be that good, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's, that's the internal dialogue, right? 
So then take that internal dialogue and, and try to have a, a conversation with yourself and say, okay, so if I like this, how do I become this? Or how do I at least learn a little bit about it? And that's the setting goals. So my current goal is to play with time. Uh, how do I warp and morph time in my playing and make it sound all crazy? The thing is, is that's not something that I can actually go to a gig and play. But for my own interests, I want to actually have this skill because it's kind of fun, it's kind of cool. Okay, Roy. okay, so now what's my plan? So here's the hard part about making a plan when it comes to your practice. If you don't have a teacher and you don't have a program that you're a part of, then you're going to be really lost. Simple as that. You have to have help. You know, self-encouragement is the start of it, but to continue with your goals, you need encouragement from other people and a teacher or some sort of program will help in that. If you don't have a teacher, maybe you're in a band that is encouraging. In fact, I highly recommend having conversations with your bandmates about each other's playing and, and saying, hey, you know, you're really good at this, but you can also work on this. And it'd be a more of a conversation than a, an accusatory attack uh, approach. So if you're having these conversations with your bandmates, you can actually have the encouragement from them to work on the areas where you struggle, which might be basic things like you're speeding up, you're slowing down. How then do I take my problem and apply a set of goals to reach a better performance? You have a book that you're working out of and you get from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. That's great. You have accomplished something that's actually really hard to do. It's very hard to finish a book of information. Now, once you finish that book, the hard part is learning how to apply that information in a real life setting. And for this, there's really only one answer, and that's actually to play and to experience and to practice with other musicians. If you're not doing that, you're not going to experience what it is like to do it both poorly and to do it well. So I remember when I was younger, I would listen back to recordings and there would always be like this one little rhythmic thing that I didn't like, but I kept doing it because it was just so ingrained in my system and I have no idea how it got there, but it was like this little thing that was programmed into my brain that said, do this, this is your feel, this is your vibe, but it almost never worked musically. So then I had to make the conscious effort to remove it. So what you see is I was applying something that I learned, but then it wasn't working. So you have to be a neutral party when it comes to performing something and then analyzing it and seeing if it works for you. So another tip, turn off the noise. What I mean by turning off the noise is removing or at least limiting what you're intaking. Because what happens is, is you say on Monday, oh, I'm going to be this kind of player. Or I'm going to practice these things. <clears throat> and then what happens is you watch another thing, another video or another, you read another article and all of a sudden it's like, oh wait, I should be doing that. And then on day two, you start this whole new thing. And you see what happens here is every day you're working on something different and you're never mastering one thing. You're never getting really good and owning one thing. And that all goes back to how you're measuring your success and your progress. And also is what I'm learning useful. I was very fortunate that I came to the drum set later in my youth. So I was 18. The thing that I needed was a teacher. So I was really fortunate to find a teacher that was almost like a second father figure in a way. He really took me under his wing. He took me to gigs with him to, sh to show me what it was like to you know, play a show and I would read the charts with him. He would give me books every week. He would give me a new book and say, just you know, look at this, look at the first page, see what you think, like it. By the time I left him, I had like 20 books. The books that he gave me all sort of focused on a specific skill. It was, you know, a, you know, a lot of information, but I still felt like I was like being, you know, led on a path to where I can do this professionally or where I can get gigs and be confident that I can play the style of music that was being asked of. True story time. When I was a younger kid, my parents would make me practice an hour a day. If I didn't practice that hour, I'd have to make it up on the weekend when I didn't have school. So there would be some weekends where I would actually sit home in my room practicing the bassoon for five hours. And it was really hard, but it was a good lesson in the discipline of it. 
And again, one of the biggest reasons I think that anyone has a hard time sitting for an hour doing one thing, let's just say music in this specific instance, is because it's a very solitary, lonely thing to do. And the next reason is they don't really know the end game. They don't know where they're going. What are they striving to do? And in a culture that's all about competition, it's really hard to see how music can fill that need for being competitive with something. Maybe I rambled on a bit, maybe this is incohesive, I don't know, but I'm just throwing some stuff out there at you and seeing what you guys think. Here's the thing, I definitely need to learn from you. So comment below, tell me what you're practicing. Also tell me some of the struggles that you have with practicing. Thanks again. See you next time.